Welcome to Life Church Panania. We are so pleased that you are here, and it is our pleasure to guide you through our service today. We're your hosts. I'm Ian. And I'm Eleanor. And we're going to begin with prayer. Father, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for dealing with our sin. Thank you for opening heaven to us. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit indwelling us that we might live for you every moment of the day. Thank you for your great plan for us. Thank you for your great provision for us. And we accept these with grateful hearts, with grateful hands, and ask that we might live them out to your glory, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got some great songs that are a celebration of praise to begin our service today. And the first of them is about praise, and the song is Hear Our Praises. Thoughts and words and action. 
we're going to move on and continue that praise theme. And we remember what God's done for us when heaven came down and glory filled my soul. So what do we do with that? Well, here's three words. Which one of them is the most important? Well, it's a trick question because they're all important. We trust and obey. Let's sing Trust and Obey.
Now we're moving into what is it that's coming up? What do we need to know about? What do we need to be aware of? And the first of them is to say a big thank you to our band and our carolers who were out on Thursday night for the Family Fun Day and uh, for all the contacts that were made. And thank you, Lord, that you're going to use these contacts to bring people closer to yourself. That's looking back. Looking ahead, we've got Church Council is coming up tomorrow, Monday. Uh, we'll be meeting online. And the big theme for this, uh, this uh, particular meeting, the last of the year, is looking at the plans for next year. So things flow smoothly. And then on Wednesday, it's our last chance to go deeper at Diggers, where we look at the go deeper questions in your handout sheet for today, starting at 11 o'clock with morning tea, then moving into our study questions. And for those who can, staying for lunch. In fact, you can come at any time and stay for as much or a little as you wish. You're most welcome to drop in and out of that activity. And then next Sunday, we're going to round out our year. It's what's called our annual general meeting, and it'll be the, we're looking back over the year, our year in review. That'll be immediately after church, but before we move into morning tea, it'll only take a very brief time. Again, looking ahead, Christmas caroling, and it will happen this Saturday coming, and the one after that, the two Saturdays before Christmas, starting at 10 a.m., going through until noon at the Bunnings on Milpera Road, just south of Bankstown Aerodrome. Uh, I hope you can be there, either to come along and sing with us or just share in the event. You're most welcome. Two Saturdays immediately before Christmas. So speaking of Christmas, the Christmas weekend looks like this. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, the 23rd, 24th and 25th. So on the Saturday... We'll be singing Christmas carols starting at 10 o'clock at Bunnings. On the Sunday, we'll be in church again at 10 o'clock. It will be our Christmas Eve service. And then on Monday, Christmas Day itself, we'll start early, 9.30 a.m., and we'll finish very early because we're aware of the, the many demands that you have on your time on Christmas Day. So I hope that you can be at one, two or three of those, if not more. That's what's coming up. Now, may we pause and pray for one another. Allow me to lead you in prayer. Father, we began our time by saying thank you for Calvary. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your son. And as we approach Christmas, we are mindful that he was born so that he might die. He came into this world to deal with our sin. And he rose again that he would live forever and be our intercessor, to be our Lord, to be our master, to be our king through all eternity. So thank you that we have such a firm foundation for our faith, a foundation that is rooted in history, in fact, and in reality. And we praise you that we have something so rock solid on which to build our faith and our lives. But with that as the foundation, we know that this world is very unstable. And so with a firm foundation, we reach out to you that you would support us through the vicissitudes of life. Father, be the grace that we need that will carry us with your strength in our weakness. Be the the peace that we need when life is unstable, chaotic and in turmoil. Be the joy 
that we need when things weigh heavy upon us to lift our hearts. Thank you for all that you are and we lift up one another to you where our needs are so many, so varied. We can hardly begin to imagine our own, let alone someone else's. But thank you that you are a God who knows each of us individually, personally and intimately. Thank you that you are close to us, close to our heads, our hearts, and you supply all that we need. Lord, we reach out to you and ask for your blessings to be lavished on those who struggle in the uncertainties of life, for those whose bodies are struggling with weakness, illness or disease, for those whose minds are unsettled and, and despondent, for those whose hearts are heavy, for those whose relationships are fraught with difficulty. Lord, give us your grace afresh every day, every moment of every day, that the work of Calvary would be fresh in our hearts, our minds, our words and our deeds to live out the life of Christ in our circumstances. So thank you for such blessings as you give us. Give us now the grace to put it into practice, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Part of how we say thank you to God is through our financial giving. And we would like to say thank you to God for what you've given to us. And we would, in the church, like to say thank you to you online for the way that you support this ministry. Because you can be sure that it is well used thoughtfully and prayerfully distributed for the good of the kingdom. Thank you for participating with us. Now we've got a little bracket of songs, and the first of them is directly from Scripture and celebrates the work of the cross. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. And how does it happen? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing this little chorus. in our text is, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this next song is about that boasting in the cross. Let's sing. It's about the cross.
And the cross features prominently in this next song as well, the last one in this bracket, a reminder that it's by the love of God that Christ went to Calvary. So let's sing how deep the Father's love for us. Scripture. The text for today is the very end. It's our last study in the book of Galatians. And so we're going to read Galatians 6 verses 11 to 18. Hear the word of the Lord. See what large letters I am using to write to you with my own hand. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. They only do this to avoid persecution for the cross of Christ. For the circumcised do not even keep the law themselves, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But as for me, may I never boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who walk by this rule 
even to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God and amen to God's word. Big businesses have got armies of people in help desks because you know how much time and effort is saved by having your own computer. Well, there's nothing new about that. God has had a help desk for centuries and it's open 24-7. Let's go to God's help desk. And the first thing we discover is I need God's help. (laughs) Don't I ever? Probably you do as well. How do we know that? Well, first of all, I need help. And by the way, I've got help. You've got help with whatever personal limitations you have. Now, here is an apostle writing. Uh, So this is a high flyer. Uh, Let's see what he says. See what large letters I am using to write to you with my own hand. Now, he, he couldn't type. But he hand wrote the letter. Why was he using big letters? Well, to know that, we have to go back to when he first met the Galatians. He came from Antioch, up in the top right, sailed to Cyprus, and then went from Cyprus up to the coast, and obviously had a plan to go one way or the other around the coast. But instead, he turned inland. We'll see that in a moment. He says to the Galatians, you know that it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. So it was because something went wrong. Something didn't go according to plan. And he became very unwell. And so he left the coast to go to what was presumably a better climate inland. And what was that illness? It was probably something to do with his eyes. Because he writes to them, if it were possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. They recognized that Paul had an eye problem. And that's why when he writes to them, he's using big letters so that he can actually see what he's writing. Different from how the rest of the letter was written by a secretary that he dictated the letter to. So do not despair if you seem inferior in any way to any other believer. Now, Paul was certainly a bold evangelist, but he was a very poor writer with very poor eyesight. And do you know how many books there are in the New Testament? There are 27. Do you know how many of those 27 were written by Paul? (laughs) Rather not written, but dictated by Paul. Of those 27, it was 13. That's about half of them. So without those unknown and unsung scribes who put pen to paper, we may not have half of our New Testament. So we all have our own unique and usually unsung place in God's kingdom on earth that will only be celebrated in glory. Do not despair if you don't seem to have something spectacular. Rejoice that you've got something usable. So I've got help with my personal limitations. But more than that, I also have help with my relational limitations. And if you need help, it's probably in dealing with people. Uh, In this case, Paul goes on to write about those who are trying to compel you. Do you bump into people who want you to do what they want, who want you to conform to their agenda? It's pretty common. People are usually so insensitive and they would rather you do what is their responsibility. So what does scripture say? Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? So that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's why we come to God's help desk. His help desk is actually a throne, a throne of his grace. 
and we find mercy so that things aren't as bad as they could be and grace that things are better than they could otherwise have been. This is the goodness of God overflowing to us. So come and tell the help desk what it is you need, what problem you're facing, what the issues are. Spell them out and be specific the way that a help desk for your computer needs you to be specific. And you'll find that God is there for you to help you through. What sort of help does he give? Well, the core of the help is through his son. God's son is my help. It's not as if God's at the other end of the phone line giving good advice. Instead, he comes into our world, into our space, into our problem. And he comes as one of us to deal with what it is that we deal with. God's son is my help. So what's our response to that? Well, I need to, first of all, focus on what Jesus did for me. So here we're looking backwards. What did he do for me? As for me, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We keep going back to Calvary. We keep going back to what Jesus did when he was nailed to that cross. We keep going back to his death on our behalf. And when when we know the importance of Calvary, when we can value the work of the cross, then our problems start to have some perspective and some greater solutions. So what did happen at the cross? Well, he who knew no sin, Jesus, became sin on our behalf. He didn't just take our sins. He didn't just deal with our sins. He actually became our sin. That's how totally engaged and absorbed was Jesus in our circumstances. He became our sin so that he could die for our sin. And what was the other half of that? What did we get in exchange? We could become the righteousness of God in him. Now again, see the depth of this. It's not that we become righteous. It's not that we are declared righteous. It's not that just that righteous is now added to us, but rather we become the righteousness of God. We become the very character of God as he infills us, as his spirit indwells us and fills us because we are now in Christ. We have the very nature of Christ. And without that, we could not get to heaven. We need the work of Calvary where the one who knew no sin became our sin and we became the righteousness of of God. That is the gospel. And we can't do anything about that because that already happened. What we can do is respond to the gospel. And if you haven't done already, you need to. Otherwise, you can't get to heaven. You can't have God's help that you need in this life. You need the ABC of response to the gospel. It's the ABC of salvation. Admit you are a sinner. Believe in what Jesus did for you because it's just a fact of history and commit your life to be his and to allow him to be in you and through you and for you and take you to be with him. That's our response to the gospel. So we not only look back to what Jesus did for us, but look around, ahead, in, out, and all around us to what Jesus is making us right now. And the end of this verse says, What counts is a new creation. God is in the throes of remaking you. Jesus has done something for you that allows you to be different. Who doesn't love playing with Lego? But you can make something with Lego and then you can pull it all apart, dismantle it and make something that is quite different. 
What a great spiritual lesson this is. With Christmas coming up, you are wondering what to give the person who has everything. Give them some Lego and attach this verse to it. Maybe even with a little paraphrase to it. You've taken apart the old Lego with its odd shapes and have put together a new model, one that is renewed according to the plan of its creator. That's a loose paraphrase, but note what it actually says, because it's much richer and deeper. You have taken off the old self, who you once were. And along with that went the things that you did, those practices. And in exchange, you have put on the new self, which is being renewed constantly, daily. How in the knowledge of the image of its creator. So we keep going back to Jesus, the creator of all things. And as we get to conform to him, to take on his image, we are reformed, rebuilt, remade, according to the, the plan that the Creator had in the beginning. There's one more thing that we're going to look at. And that is not only God's Son being my help, but God's people are also my help. What I have is I have help already, and it's within my church family. That, that's why Scripture knows nothing about being a lone ranger believer, just being by yourself. You need to be engaged in God's people, in his church. And so there is mercy, uh, peace and there is mercy for all who walk according to this rule. And Oh, we love to conform to that rule, the rule of Calvary, the rule of Christ-likeness. And when we do that, and when we do that together, oh, we grow into the knowledge of him. We overcome his problems. We are the new people of God, the new Israel of God. So who are these people, the, the church? Let me give you two examples, one from the Old Testament, one from the New. The Old Testament one says, you are a people holy to the Lord your God. That's pretty amazing by itself, but it goes on. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples that are on the face of the earth. You are so special that he picked you. You are his chosen. Celebrate what God thinks about you. And in the New Testament, we have something that is very similar. It also begins, you are, and this time, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can you hear echoes of Calvary through all that? why God has chosen you, how excited he is about you, what he wants to do for you, how he wants to help you be your help desk every moment of every day. And so we have help within God's people, but it comes down to more personal than that when we find that I have God's help within my whole person. It's not just bits and pieces of me. It's not just... Sunday mornings, but rather I bear in my body the marks of Jesus and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So I've got help within my whole person. I, there is help for me in my external world, in my experiences, in the things where my body has to go, my body has to do. My body is his temple. And it should bear the very image, the very marks of Jesus. And of course, there is the internal, where deep within me, the innermost part of me, has the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you're very familiar with this illustration. I won't spend much time on it, but this is where the illustration comes from. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely this is what a complete you looks like and may your whole spirit and soul 
and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what you look like in this current world. And what we all find is... The God of peace sanctifies us and keeps us blameless. The sanctify is holiness now. The blameless is being kept so that when Jesus comes back again and takes us to be with him, we will be found blameless and there will be nothing to hinder our entrance into heaven itself. How good it is to be helped by the help desk that's open 24-7 and is there for all eternity. And what's the key to all of that? It's found in the very last verse, the very last sentence of this little book. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Indeed, it is the grace of God. Grace is where we get more than we deserve because of what Jesus did for us at Calvary. He took our sin. He gave us his righteousness. And within us, deep within us, from our spirit outwards, we have grace flowing. And you know that's important. And we don't need more than that because we find my grace is sufficient for you. Because my power is made perfect in weakness. That's really all we need. For God's grace to flow through us, welling up within us from the inside out. And even when we're weak, even when our eyes fail, nevertheless, grace is sufficient. So we close this little study of Galatians with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Now our response to what God has been saying to us in his word is that we will make the choice to live for the kingdom and especially to live for King Jesus. Let's sing Live for the Kingdom.
Thank you for being part of our service today. And as you go out, go with faith, hope and love being put into action by all your choices so that you will make followers of Jesus by yourself, finding that you are indeed a follower of Jesus. And now may the Lord give you his grace, his peace and his joy to carry you through this day and forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's have a nice cup of tea. And of course, let someone know that you went online for church today. And they can too. They can find us at our website, lifechurchpanania.org. They can find us on Facebook. And if you go to YouTube and search for Life Church Panania, you'll find lots of videos and lots of great music. So let me encourage you, Life Church Panania on YouTube. Until we can meet again online, God bless. Goodbye.